Lisbon, Portugal's capital, rich in history, culture, and most importantly, delicious food. I visited Lisbon for the first time a few months ago, and I instantly fell in love with its amazing cuisine. During my stay, I ate Portuguese food at every meal every day. So today, I'm gonna introduce you to some must try Portuguese dishes and restaurants in Lisbon based on my own experience. But here's a twist we are only focusing on hidden local restaurants that aren't well known among tourists. There are plenty of videos and articles about popular Lisbon restaurants, but many of those places can be very busy, packed with tourists, and a bit pricey. When I travel, I love discovering local eateries with no English menu or English speaking staff. These places often feel more authentic and serve amazing local food at lower prices. If you are passionate about finding hidden gems while traveling, keep watching because this video is for you. I'll include links to all the restaurants in the description so you can check them out after watching. Without further ado, Let's start our Lisbon food tour, Hidden Local Restaurants Edition. First on the list, you must try codfish in Portugal. Dry and salted cod, known as bacalao in Portuguese, is iconic here. I had an amazing grilled cod called bacalao asado at a restaurant named Flor do Mundo. It's in Belo Alto a touristy area in Lisbon, but the restaurant was cozy and offered traditional food at reasonable prices. Bacalao asado is served with thick cut fillets, potatoes, and vegetables. The cut fluffy white flesh paired with olive oil soaked potatoes is simply delicious. For dessert, I had chocolate mousse, or mousse de chocolate in Portuguese, a common treat in Portugal. Codfish has been a staple in Portuguese cuisine for centuries. With so many recipes, it's said you could eat a different codfish every day of the year. That's 365 ways to enjoy it. I had another fantastic codfish at a restaurant called Vinci Oito near the Graça area, which had two popular viewpoints overlooking Lisbon. I stopped upon this cute small restaurant by chance while staying at a nearby hostel. The cottage here was made with shredded bacalao, thin potato chips, and onions, all sautéed together and mixed with eggs. The olives added a delightful flavor twist. This dish was described on the menu as cottage brass style. When I asked the staff what brass meant, they explained it's named after a chef. Initially, I thought it was a restaurant chef. But later, I learned that Bacalao a Blas is named after the chef who invented it. The food was amazing, and the place felt very local as I didn't see any other tourists there. One reason I love Portuguese food is that it's quite similar to Japanese cuisine in many ways. One of these similarities is the emphasis on seafood. Sardines are another common fish in Portuguese dishes, and they are also popular in Japan. I had a sardine dish at Frutaria Saudiana, a fantastic local restaurant in the Seattle area, serving home-style Portuguese food. Sardinha Sardas is a simple yet delicious dish of plump sardines seasoned with salt and grilled over charcoal. Salt grilled sardines are common in Japan too, so I really enjoy these familiar flavors. I think the simple seasoning that brings out the best of the fresh ingredients highlights the similarities between Portuguese and Japanese home cuisine. For dessert, I had doce de casa, a thick creamy sweet Portuguese rice pudding with a generous sprinkling of cinnamon. There is a beautiful sunset spot nearby called Santa Catarina Viewpoint, perfect to visit before or after dinner. <laughs> Lisbon is also a paradise for meat lovers. Portugal is known for a variety of meat dishes, and I had a fantastic pork steak at Old Cartagero. 
I discovered this restaurant by noticing a line of locals in front while wandering around the Alfam area. When locals line up for a restaurant, it's a good sign. So I decided to have lunch there, and it was as authentic as I expected. There was no English menu and no English speaking staff. The place was bustling with activity, and every staff member looked so busy. Initially, I was a bit confused about who to talk to, where to wait, and how to order. Eventually, I managed to get a seat and ordered a pork steak. The steak, served with fries and pilaf, was juicy and delicious. As a Japanese, I also appreciate that rice is quite common in their cuisine. What surprised me most was the price. The steak was big and filling, yet it only cost 750 euros. With water and bread, my entire meal cost just 10 euros. For authenticity and value for money, this restaurant is a must visit. If you are looking for something meaty but lighter, try Bifana. Bifana is a popular Portuguese street food, a sandwich made with marinated pork. During my stay in Lisbon, I became obsessed with Bifana and had one for breakfast every day. You can find Bifana at many snack bars and kiosks in Lisbon. I went to Leandro's snack bar near my hostel. The secret to a great bifana is marinating the pork overnight to let the flavors soak in. They are usually cheap and flavorful meat is truly addictive, so be sure to try it when you're in Lisbon. No discussion of Portuguese cuisine will be complete without mentioning their sweets. The most iconic and famous dessert has to be the pasta de nata, a Portuguese egg custard tart pastry. In Lisbon, there are two highly popular specialty stores for pasta de nata. I should warn you, these are the only well-known places in this video that are always bustling with tourists. However, locals told me that these two spots are must-visit for pasta de nata and having tried them myself, I can confirm they are exceptional. So, let's check out these famous shops. First up is Pastels de Belém. This shop is in the Belém district, home to many structures from Portugal's age of discovery. The Pastel de Nata is said to have originated at the nearby Jeronimus Monastery. Since 1837, this shop has preserved the original recipes and constantly attracts long lines of customers. But it's not just tourists lining up, locals love this place too. Ask any local for the best pasta de nata, and they'll likely mention this shop. Here's the pasta de nata I got there. It's a bit dark as I was eating outside at night, but I hope you can still see how tasty it looks. The outer crust is crispy, while the inside is filled with creamy, delicious custard. It's not overly sweet, allowing the delicate egg flavor to shine. They always serve them fresh out of the oven, so I highly recommend enjoying one on the spot even if you take some to go. The other popular spot is Monte Garia. Monte Garia has several locations in Lisbon, and I visited the one by Luis de Camonia Square in the Seattle area. This shop opened in 2014, but has quickly become a star in Lisbon's pastel de nata scene. Inside, there is a counter facing the kitchen where you can watch the entire process of making a pastel de nata. To me, the one at Monte Gallia is sweeter with a still crunchy yet more stable base than Pastéis de Belém. Both Pastéis de Belém and Monte Gallia are incredibly delicious, so be sure to visit both and compare their pasta de nata flavors. Last but not least, we have Casa da Inja. This local restaurant is in a great location very close to one of the Monte Garia spots that I just introduced. 
Despite the name, they serve traditional Portuguese food, not Indian. I came here for my last meal in Lisbon and decided to go back to seafood ordering good grouper. Besides the fantastic and reasonably priced food, the place was lively with friendly locals. I had a great conversation with a local guy sitting next to me and the friendly staff behind the counter. The staff even gave me a small discount, as you can see from this handwritten receipt. Here, I enjoyed not only the traditional cuisine, but also the interaction with locals, a perfect end to my Lisbon trip. So, these are the local restaurants and their amazing traditional food that I loved in Lisbon. I've included links to all the restaurant's Google Maps information in the description. As much as I enjoyed my food experience, a few days were not enough to eat everything I wanted. There are still so many Portuguese dishes I want to try, like arroz de pato, Portuguese duck rice, carne de porco alentejana, pork and clams, and caldeirada, Portuguese fish too. I definitely want to go back and try the dishes I missed this time. If you live or have lived in Portugal and have any recommendations for dishes and restaurants, please feel free to leave a comment. And if you enjoyed this video and want more travel tips, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.